Welcome, everybody. Let's talk about something that I observed in real time with Charles Schwab. Now, for those that uh, don't know, and some of you do know, um, Charles Schwab recently acquired TD Ameritrade in like the last uh, two or three years, whatever it's been, and they slowly rolled out their changes and um, and moved all of the TD Ameritrade customers over to their to their platform. Okay. Um, needless to say, it has not gone smoothly for a lot of account holders. There was all kinds of problems. They had problems with uh, pricing. Can you imagine you're place, placing an order and you're placing an order based on what you think the price is and their data pricing's wrong? I mean, it just people must have lost a ton of money or made more than they should or, or thought they made money but didn't, all kinds of stuff. They're, they're going to get sued for that. Um, not that I necessarily think retail a retail trader has a, a chance of winning a lawsuit against lowered up Schwab, but they're probably gonna get sued for that. Um, they also, uh, I witnessed this myself on my account in TD Ameritrade. I had, I've talked about this before, but I had corporate bonds that TD Ameritrade gave me margin on. When it went to Charles Schwab, they didn't. So you can imagine, and it was, I had a quite a, decent sized portfolio of corporate bonds. So you can imagine my margin, right? My marginable securities significantly was reduced. I mean, depending on what other positions you're holding, you may be using those bonds um, as a marginable collateral, right? I mean, this is part of what margin uh, is. And it's some of the things that you can do when you have lots of borrowing power against other assets like corporate bonds in this case. So they, in my opinion, they intentionally negated a whole lot of buying power from TD Ameritrade account holders on purpose. And they basically made people uh, liquidate positions and do all this very shady stuff. And I'm sure some account holders got really reamed uh, pretty badly. So that was the second thing that I noticed with them that was super shady. All right, so um, I'm not sure that that's a suable offense because they can set their own standards and put their own whatever. And TD Ameritrade says, yeah, this bond is marginal. And then Schwab says, no, it's not. You know, you would think they would just honor and care over what TD Ameritrade had. Nope. They didn't give a rat's butt about that. I don't think you can sue for it, but it's certainly extremely shady. So there, there was already two things right off the the bat that I um, that I really um, noticed and thought, man, Schwab is like they're just this migration has been horrible, and uh, I was seriously contemplating not staying with them. But I hung in there for a little while, and um, until today. Let me give you the latest. If you think that that was bad, the things I mentioned, wait till you hear this one. And this one, what I and I have, what I'm about to tell you, I observed this happen in real time. It wasn't something I discovered going through transactions and, and looking at it in hindsight. I watched it actually happen in real time. I had, you see in front of you, the spreadsheet. And I just put some basic things down here on how uh, margin works and how buying power works with Schwab, okay? Most of the brokerage firms have something similar. So Schwab, like TD Ameritrade, had something called buying power, okay? And that just basically means how much margin you have left, okay? And I put here $2,200. $2, so I had a, um, a position on for um, some Russell... 2000 uh, futures, the micro, just some micro, two of them. It, this is the margin required. It's a little bit more in this, but I'm just doing approximates. It's about $800 of margin required. All right. And I had two con two micro contracts. So the margin, total margin required is about 1600 bucks. Okay. So I took this, this position of two contracts, you know, all this right here is regarding the position. And after I did that, this was the borrowing power I had left. I had $2,200 left, okay? So it was higher, right? It was $1,600 higher than this before I took this position. In any case, 
I had twenty two hundred dollars of <coughs> excuse me of buying power, and I had this position on. Okay, the trade, uh, or I should say the position, but I put here trade. The position was four hundred dollars profitable. Okay, it was up like four hundred bucks. So I closed it. I took the four hundred dollars of profit. Okay. Now, for those know, for those people who don't know anything about margin and how it works is this this I'm oh, sorry this sixteen hundred dollars right here, it's held against your account. Okay, it's it's um. You can't use this sixteen hundred bucks. In other words, if I tack on to sixteen hundred to twenty two hundred, we'd get thirty eight hundred dollars, right? These two together would make thirty eight hundred dollars. But since I used some of the margin, it went down to twenty two hundred dollars. Makes sense. So there's sixteen hundred dollars that they're holding in total margin, All right? Now the you got to keep in mind this position's profitable when I closed it. It's not a loss; it's a gain. So this is going to go to my cash in a positive manner, okay? And what should happen to the buying power, right? Think about this for a second. What should happen to my buying power when I release this position and close it? This 1600 bucks should be added back into the 2200, right? That's what you almost always see. And of course, I see this all the time. You close the position, the buying power gets added back to your existing buying power. And you should, in this case, should I should have come up with $3,800. And I was looking at my real-time data on the TOS platform, I closed the position, and guess what the buying power was after I closed it? Six hundred bucks, not thirty-eight hundred. Can you guess what they did? It's not hard to figure out, right? They took the sixteen hundred dollars and subtracted it from the buying power. They were supposed to add it back in. That's how bad. That's how bad their software screwed up because they don't have a. Th this transition that they made from TD Ameritrade to Schwab, they didn't properly vet all the scenarios. I know they didn't. That's why you had balance problems, price, price data issues. They had, a, oh, another one I didn't mention, they had alert problems for like two weeks. The alerts weren't working. People were screaming bloody murder about their balances being off. And now here's another one. They improperly calculated the buying power. So guess what Schwab did? They stole $3,200 of my money. Thirty-two hundred bucks. I. This is no lie. This is a true story. Happened in real time. And of course, for me, that was the last straw with Schwab. You know, they just whatever. You know, I could probably sue them, and maybe I'll get somewhere, and maybe I won't. And I look. You know, that this happened. I think yesterday. And I looked. I've been looking at the balances to see if they made made the adjustment. They didn't. They just took the money. They never put it back. So I'm just putting this out there because I put out a video, I think a month or two ago and said Schwab is really bad. And well, I was right. They're not just really bad. They're stealing people's money. And I think that they, uh, I think the executives, um, the executives at Schwab wanted to migrate TD Ameritrade so bad that they rushed it. Now, you know, they were like two years in the making, two or three years in the making to do this. But there was still lingering COVID stuff going on. They still rushed it. They didn't properly test all the scenarios with their migration. They, they're total clown. They're ass clowns. Right? I don't know if this is intentionally stealing. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It doesn't make a difference. I don't really care if it's intentional or not. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to anybody. 3200 bucks. So... Schwab, let me tell you guys all something right now. If you're trading with Schwab, um, my opinion is you can't, don't walk, run as fast as you can from those, those ass clowns because I think their logic is so ham-fistedly screwed up that it. I think it'd be years in the making for them to finally get it all sorted out. In the meantime, customers are going to be, I guarantee right now, I can guarantee this because I'm one of them and I know I'm not the only one. I guarantee that there are retail customers right now, their account balances are not wrong and they never will be with Schwab. That's how bad they screwed this up. So this was a kind of a little bit of a complex uh, migration, right? I had uh, corporate bonds. I also traded futures. They left my account as a, one of the last group of accounts to be moved over, right? They did a lot of other accounts, but mine was a little bit more complex, right? You got corporate bonds, you got futures going on. They like put that to the very end. 
and those people got migrated last. Well, they didn't handle the complexity properly and they did not test properly. And they have some really bad logic somewhere going on in their <laughs> in the way that they calculate their margin. And I got a feeling that isn't the only place that their logic is screwed up. So, you know, as soon as I can, I'm going to try to do what I need to do on the uh, for me. And I got some things I need to kind of take care of and get the Schwab account kind of settled a little bit here. But once I've got uh, where I want it to be, um, you can bet your your ass that um, all my assets are going to be transferred out of Schwab. Uh, I'm not going to say where I'm moving it to because it's nobody's damn business, but this is a video to put out a warning. Schwab is completely screwed. They are completely screwed. They're, they're going to get audited. There's going to be, I guarantee there's going to be people that are going to find out they've lost a bunch of money with Schwab because Schwab has got such horrible accounting going on. They're totally going to get sued. Now, I think most people probably don't have a snowball's hell and chance of winning their lawsuits, but I think a few people are going to win, especially if it translates into big money. And I don't think that it's just going to be, well, Schwab's going to say, well, we better pay these people back. They may even do that. I still think they're going to get sued. Just the amount of 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 money lost, right? Think about, it isn't just the money you lost in a trade. It's money that they took from retail traders who don't have access to that money that's been stolen, either intentionally or through just really bad management and bad rollout and bad migration. That's money they could have used at bare minimum to get interest, right? I mean, interest rates right now are pretty high. I mean, I could go get seven, eight, nine percent in some places if you know what you're doing. So Schwab is, the, I mean, I'm telling you what, they are screwed. Totally screwed. They deserve it. They're a hor horrible freaking business. Horrible company. Horrible brokerage. I've only, I've only had, I've been trading for well over 30 years. I've only had really two brokers that ever were bad. It was, one was a little uh, boutique broker up in the Northeast that I had to jump through hoops to get, to get my money out of there. And I finally did. I had to wait for like a year to do it, but I finally got my money out of there. And the only other one than that was international brokers. International brokers is the biggest con job ever. There's probably people right now watching this video that have that um, have accounts at international brokers. And all I'm going to tell you about international brokers is they will charge you what's called a um, fair trading fee. Okay, and they're not going to disclose that anywhere in any of your transactions. If you go look at your history transactions, you will not see anything regarding this fair trading fee. It's like they have this woke, woke kind of um, a policy that for trading to be fair for everybody, we have to charge you a fee. Basically, it's theft. And I confronted them about it. This was about three, four years ago. I said, hey, man, my balances are off. What's going on with this balance? I don't see. I've done an audit on my, my history, my transactions, and it doesn't add up to this balance. They said, oh, there's a convenience or a fair trade broker fee. And they finally disclosed it. I'm like, why is that not on the the uh, transactional history? Oh, we don't, you, would, you know, that fee doesn't get disclosed. <laughs> so that's international brokers. If you don't know and you're trading with them and I was trading futures with them, they may not do as other. I can't say when they do it. It's hard to say, but you, you better check your, you better check your balances carefully with international brokers. I guarantee, or I don't guarantee, but there's a high probability they're siphoning money off of your account and you don't even know it. That's how bad that broker is. Real scumbags, real dirt bags. And those are the only two brokers I ever really had trouble with. All the other brokers I ever uh, worked with um, were pretty good until I got to, uh, until TD Ameritrade got gobbled up by Schwab. Schwab has got to be the most irresponsible, ham-fisted, derelict in duty broker I've ever come across. I, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting how bad their accounting is and how bad their migration has been. And there's got to be millions of dollars that have been lost, maybe even tens of millions of dollars that have been lost because Schwab had totally screwed this up. All right. So that's my take on Schwab. 
Um, I'm putting out this video. I'm saying it like it is. I observe this happen in real time. This is a true story. I'm not making it up. I don't have a personal vendetta against Schwab, but I'm also not going to hold back. I'm going to tell the truth like it is. These people are dirtbags and their accounting sucks and they have serious problems with computational stuff going on in their software. Guaranteed because I saw it happen in real time. All right, that's it for now. I'll talk to you all real soon again later.